following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools. Funded in part by the Virginia Satellite Educational Network. Hi, I'm author Michelle Green. Do you have Moxie? Find out if you do next on Meet the Author. Welcome to Meet the Author. My name is Della Kidd. Here at the MTA studio, you'll meet some of the best writers of children's literature. Today, we have a student audience, as well as author Michelle Green. Some of Michelle's book titles are the Willie Pearl series, and A Strong Right Arm, the story of Mamie Peanut Johnson. If you like stories that have moxie, you've come to the right place. And if you're unfamiliar with the word moxie, keep watching, and you'll find out what it means. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for being here today. Hi. Nice to meet you. Michelle, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I know the students are all anxious to get to know you, so mm -hmm. I thought we would start right here in the studio with our first question from Amber. Mrs. Green, I was wondering what or who inspired you to write? I had a fabulous teacher in the fourth and fifth grade, and every day she would read to us from the Little House on the Prairie series. I remember thinking as I heard those stories, you know, that's what I want to do, create images and characters with my words. And it took a little time and a lot of growing up and staying in school, but I eventually met my dream. You know, it's important. I remember being read to a lot when I was in, in mm -hmm. grade school, and I know that helped me with my love of reading and, and books as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Our next question is from Roland. Hi, from Roland. Hi. Hey, Roland. What's your writing routine, and do you write every day? You know, there's no one correct way to be a writer. Everyone finds his or her own way. Now, for me, writing begins at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I tend to write between 4 and 6 a.m. And because I do, I like to wear comfortable pajamas. I have this favorite pair. They're sock monkey pajamas. <laughs> and also, to keep me awake, I have to have that cup of coffee so oh, I don't yeah. fall into the keyboard. <laughs> Speaking of keyboard, I usually write with a computer because I need something fast enough to keep up with my ideas. But I also keep a journal around for those times when I'm not at the computer. And this is very, very important because you never know when the next great idea might hit you. Mm -hmm. I also write to music. And you were talking earlier that you like using instrumental music when you write, which I like to listen to when I'm working as well. I do. I love jazz, especially Miles Davis. Yeah, he's great. We have a question from Raina. How did you come up with the idea to write a strong right arm? You know, probably the question I get asked most by young writers is where do you get your ideas? Well, A Strong Right Arm is a book that actually came right up to me and demanded to be written. I have two sons. My younger son, Evan, is an avid baseball fan. He's really a great player now. But a few years ago when he was just starting out, well, let's say it wasn't pretty. Oh boy. So <laughs> looking for a way to encourage him, I literally stumbled upon the answer one day when in my neighborhood there was the grand opening of the Negro Leagues baseball shop. And when I s went inside that store, it was filled with all kinds of neat stuff. One of the things I found was this t-shirt that had the image of a woman baseball player. I got curious and flipped it on the other side. And Raina, could you read to us the message that's on the back of this shirt? One of only three women to play professional baseball in the Negro Leagues, Mamie Peanut Johnson pitched for the in Indianapolis Clowns from 1953 to 1955. Her accuracy, hustle, and extraordinary curveball enabled her to hold her own with the big boys. You know, I love history, but I had never heard of a woman baseball player, so I rushed to the counter and gave it to the clerk to ring it up for me. And as I was paying for this shirt, I heard a voice from the other side of the store, and the voice said, would you like me to autograph that for you? And Mamie Peanut Johnson was in the store at that very moment. Well, I got my autograph, but I got more than that because she told me that of the three women who ever played professional baseball on a man's team, she was the only one still alive. So this was a book that absolutely had to be written. What timing. I mean, there's Perfect. no way you could plan anything like that. That's it, right. it is, you're right, it's begging to be told. <laughs> How did she get her name Peanut? Peanut, believe it or not, is five feet, two inches tall, and when she was on the pitcher's mound, she only weighed 98 pounds oh. with her spikes on. 
but she went up against some of the best hitters of the time. She told me there was one game in St. Louis, end of the, the ninth, and the best hitter in the league was on the plate, uh, was coming up to the plate, Hank Bayless. He was six feet, three inches tall. He weighed more than 200 pounds. She had him one strike down already. And on the second ball, when she was getting ready to throw, he pointed at her and said, ain't no peanut of a woman gonna strike me out. Well, the rest they say is history. She, she had him out on three straight strikes, won the game, and from that time on, she kept the name Peanut. Well, to, her, to him, she was a Peanut. That's there was right. probably a distance of like this much <laughs> between least, their heights. Right? That's right, more than a <laughs> foot. Uh huh. Michelle, we're looking at a picture of young mm -hmm. Mamie. Is this a friend with her? That is a friend. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's her best friend and also one of the characters in the book, Rita. Would you believe that last summer I went by Mamie's house for a visit and it was an amazing thing. Rita and Mamie were sitting on the front steps of her mother's house, just like the picture in the book. Some of you might not know this, but Mamie actually lives just a stone's throw away from where the new Washington Nationals baseball team plays in the nation's capital of Washington, D.C. That's wonderful. We also, we have a picture mm -hmm. of Mamie today. Could you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about this one? Well, again, Mamie is still very much alive. She's just as feisty as ever. <laughs> and if you've ever had a chance yeah. to meet her, you would know that without question. Um, she still is very much connected to baseball. She does baseball camps. She likes to coach baseball. And she was actually at the home opener of the Washington Nationals team, trash talking the opposing pitcher. We really thought we were going to have to bring her down on the field. <laughs> Mamie hasn't changed. <laughs> Not one bit. <laughs> we also have a picture of her with the, the Negro Baseball League Foundation. Tell us a little bit about this picture. There are a number of Negro Leagues players that are still very much alive and in this area. And they still travel together as a team doing special promotions, throwing out first pitches and so forth. So a lot of her teammates are still here and you can find out more information about them and their websites in the, in the back of a strong right arm. I'm so glad we still have all of these old photos. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful stories. Yes, yes, absolutely. Very exciting. We have a question from Timothy. Miss Green, I was wondering what kind of research did you have to do to be able to write a strong right arm? You know, after I met Mamie that day, I didn't just rush home and go to my keyboard and start writing. I had a lot of research to do. Some of the research I did were in books like these, picture books. This one talks about the All-American Girls uh, Baseball League, and do you know Mamie actually tried out for that league. This other book about Satchel Paige, one of the best hitters of the time, he actually taught Mamie how to throw her curveball. And this one about Hank Aaron, I found out in my research that Hank Aaron was a teammate of hers before he went up to the majors. And you know, you made a very good point because a lot of times students of your age as well as adults and, small, and younger kids think that picture books are just for younger kids. And they're not. They were a very important part of your research. One of the best ways to learn something is to read a children's picture book because picture book authors and illustrators are very, very careful mm -hmm. with the facts. We want to make sure that we get it right. Now, I did lots and lots of interviews with Mamie and her other teammates. I looked through lots and lots of photographs and went to baseball games all the time. But probably the most important piece of research that I did was learning how to play the game. And for that, I went back to Evan's coaches and begged them to teach me how to play. Was it hard? It was very <laughs> hard. And after two seasons, I learned how to pitch and run and steal and score and I even learned how to trash talk. That was the best part. <laughs> you had to really get into the game. I had to really get in the game. <laughs> One other thing I'd like to mention, this jersey that I'm wearing is an actual copy of the jersey, an authentic replica of the wool jersey that Mamie mm -hmm. wore. And to kind of help me get into her character, I would write with this jersey on, and that helped to let me know that Mamie was here when Michelle Green was, had to take a hike. You know, the camera might not be able to pick it up, but this fabric is very heavy. This has got to be so hot. It is. The uniforms that players wore mm -hmm. back then were 100% wool. They're not the soft cotton polyester mm -hmm. that they have now. Can you imagine having to pitch two, sometimes three games a day in a 100% wool uniform from collar to cuff? No. Many, <laughs> well, back in those days, players got paid by how many games they played how many people showed up and whether or not they won. And so they had to play lots of games at 50 cents a piece 
to really make a living. They didn't have the endorsement deals and the, the Pepsi products and so forth. They really did it because they absolutely loved the game. Very different system than what we have now in sports. So much, that's so true. The other thing I'd like to mention is that maybe one of the reasons she's so phenomenal is that she played baseball at a time that not only were women not allowed to play the game, and still they're still not able to play the game professionally, but it was a time when we had separate baseball teams in this country. I'm so glad that we have gotten beyond those times now. So she really had two strikes against her. One is a woman and one is an African American, and yet she kept on pursuing her dreams. And I'm so happy that she set that path out there for, for all of us to follow. She set a fine example for all of us. Absolutely. Is there another question for Michelle? I do. Go ahead, Priya. What was your favorite part of the book? Mm. Oh. <laughs> I really, really like the very first chapter. It starts out when Mamie was mm -hmm. 10 years old and just learning how to play baseball in South Carolina. And she was taught by her uncle, who was very close to her in age. And it describes the way she used to play baseball. For example, you know, she didn't just have a baseball that she used. She actually had to go out every single day and find a nice sized rock. And then she wrapped it around and around with sticky tape until it felt just right for her to throw. And so she had to go out and actually make a ball to play with every single day. And then, of course, they didn't have regular bases like you'll find in some little league parks today. They would make bases out of whatever they could find, tree stumps and pie plates and whatever they could find. It's just good fun out in the front yard playing with her friends. That's my very favorite part of all. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll take the Moxie Challenge with author Michelle Green. Coming up, it's Bookmark's author tips about the writing process. Stay tuned. Meet the author and get the full story, the backstory. You guys are actually the first to know about this. I haven't even told my editor about this idea. The revised story, the author's story. You just do it. You read, you watch, and you write. And sometimes, quite a story. Writing isn't a job. It's a way of looking at the world and meeting new people. Meet the Author, a production of the Fairfax Network. MTA Bookmarks. I take that time to edit and to rewrite and to try to corral all my writing into a story because uh, editing is like the polishing. It's where you make your work a lot better. MTA Bookmarks only on Meet the Author. Welcome back. We're here today with author Michelle Green and our student audience. Afria has the next question for you, Michelle. Mrs. Green, I've read in your book that you call Mamie Pina Johnson a living legend. What exactly does that mean? You know, a lot of times we think that important historical events are things that took place a long, long time ago. But there are a lot of people walking around that we would meet every day that we would have no idea that did important things. And so when I met Mamie, she seemed just like another ordinary person hanging out at the baseball shop. And little did I know that she had a story that made her a one-of-a-lifetime individual. And I'm so glad that I had a chance to meet her that day. Oh, well, we are too. Evan, you're up. Did you ever play baseball or softball? And what's your favorite team? It's hard to pinpoint a favorite team because I love baseball so much, but I've got to tell you the World Series Chicago White Sox have my heart because I was born in Chicago actually. In terms of playing baseball myself, I did play baseball for two seasons with Evan's team. And let me put it this way, on the very last night of practice, the coach said, Michelle, he said, we're gonna play the kids and all the parents are gonna play the kids. And all the parents, we're gonna ask you to do everything with your opposite hand. And he looked right at me. He said, Michelle, uh -oh. <laughs> you can bat regular. Oh, boy. So <laughs> he would have given me the same advice. I bumps. think I'll just stick to writing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Michelle, in a strong right arm, you wrote from a, uh, a certain perspective. Could you tell us how you approached telling the story? Sure. One of the very first decisions a writer has to make when starting out a book is whose story is it? Mm -hmm. You know, after following Mamie for two and a half years and interviewing her, Sometimes I really felt that I was Mamie Peanut Johnson. And so the very first line of the book that came to me once I quieted down and sat at my keyboard was this one. Mama never mentioned it, 
but I'm sure I must have been born with a baseball in my hand. And I thought, that's Mamie's voice. And so I thought, you know, it's really no mystery that I should be writing this in Mamie's voice because at times I did feel like I was her. In fact, I mentioned earlier that I wrote with this copy of her jersey on most of the time. And so I started writing the book in what's called first person. So the words that you will hear most are words like, I did this, I went here. And when you read the book, you will, it'll be as if Mamie herself were telling you the story. And it really does make it sound very realistic that she really is telling you the story as you read along. Now, if you'd like to hear Mamie's real voice for yourself, if you go to the website, there's a link on the home page with a radio interview where you can hear Mamie talk about the time that she attempted to try out for the All-American Girls Baseball League. And so, read the book, go to the website, listen to hear Mamie tell the story in her own words. It's fascinating. Thanks for the tip. You're welcome. <laughs> Evan, did you have another question? <laughs> do you have moxie? Do I have moxie? I believe I do. Let me tell you what moxie means. Yes, I think we're all anxious to find out. Okay. Moxie is my nickname, but it's a word that means so much more than that. Moxie means spirit, courage, and determination, especially in times of difficulty. And I've taken that name, and I have found that I'm not the only one that has moxie. Moxie is alive and well in so many of the students that I've met along the way. And Mamie Peanut Johnson has moxie, too. You brought along some moxie items with you, too, that I've, if you could explain that for I us. I did. Moxie was actually a soft drink. It's been around for a very, very long time. It's very rare. And this is what the bottle looks like. And um, we have taken this word moxie, and we have adopted it to make it the name of a very, very special book club for young writers and young illustrators. So that if you were to go to my website, michellewygreen.com, you can click on a very special link about the Moxie Kids Club and find out how you can get Moxie for yourself. Not the drink, but how you can display the qualities of Moxie in your everyday lives. I don't think you could have picked a more perfect title for your book club. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, tell us w what kind of book club is it? Is it, it mostly a writing club? Can you describe how it works? I'll, I'll be glad to do that. Moxie is an online community for students who want to write, who want to illustrate books, but any student who has a creative imagination and would like to connect with other students. Um, through the Moxie Book Club, you can sign up and get newsletters mm -hmm. from me that talk about the writing process. You'll meet other Moxie kids. and Most importantly, you can submit your own writing, your own illustrating, your, your poems, and you'll have an opportunity to have them published on the site and on upcoming issues of the newsletter. We're also going to have special Moxie events throughout the year in different parts of the country, like we did this past summer, where Moxie kids got together and had some creative writing exercises. And so I hope that you'll all uh, visit me online and sign up for the Moxie Kids Club. Oh, absolutely. It's a terrific um, opportunity for kids to, to join a club without having to worry about transportation and it gives them an audience for their writing. It's terrific. And another important feature of Moxie is that we are going to have online chats with other famous writers and illustrators and with Mamie Peanut Johnson herself. So that's a very, very special event to look forward to. Absolutely. Our MTA crew got to see Moxie in action with author Michelle Green. Let's take a look. Hey, we met author Michelle Green at the launch of the Moxie Kids Club. She told us about a writing exercise that I like to call the name game. First, Mrs. Green passed around a Ziploc bag full of blank index cards. She asked us to pull out one card for each letter in our name. Then write one letter on each card. She told us not to worry if we had a short first name. We could use the letters from our first and last name. Miss Green collected our letters, put them in another bag, and mixed them up. We then had to pick eight letters out of the bag and set them face down in front of us. We weren't quite sure what we had to do with those letters, but we soon found out. Your job is with the letters you have to come up with a new name. It can be any kind of name. It can be a first name and a last name. We were encouraged to mix up the letters, trade them, and keep switching them around. As if that wasn't tricky enough, 
Miss Green then asked us to come up with a sentence that describes that person. Now while you're doing this, grown-ups and moxie kids, this is a great exercise if you're writing and you're kind of stuck for characters. Michaela, the bravest in our group, read first. AC magic, I make magical things happen. AC magic, very, very nice. The game did not stop there. Miss Green walked around with a bag full of props. We had to pick one prop from the bag and add that to our story. Miss Green shared another great writing tip with us. Let me tell you some things that really make stories nice and rich. We all talk about things that we see. But you know, we have five senses, don't we? We have eyes, things that we see. We have ears, things that we hear. But we also have noses. So maybe we'd like to learn how those flowers smell. Or maybe we want to learn what the inside of that glove might smell like. It doesn't have to be a good smell. We also have a tongue, OK? So maybe we want to know more about how that Pez candy tastes as it dissolves on your tongue. And we feel things, don't we? So maybe those feathers are tickling your chin right now. Those are called details, and they help to make our story larger. Finally, we shared our stories. Rebel also likes to sew, so she sewed a soccer ball so she could play soccer, and then she used the spool for a table with her stuffed animals. Very nice. You know, I like the way that Reba used it for what it was intended and then used it in a way that it wasn't intended. And that's really creativity. That's, that's creativity is looking at something a little bit differently from the ordinary. Good job. Good job, everybody. In my opinion, this writing exercise earned an A+. I am now an official member of the Moxie Kids Club. Michelle, those were great writing tips. I liked the name activity and the use of props always helps us with when we're doing our descriptive writing. You know, even the best writers get stuck mm -hmm. from time to time with something called writer's blocks, but they're tools of the trade that we can use to kind of jumpstart our mm -hmm. creativity. Some of these activities will be in the Moxie newsletter, but sometimes when you get stuck, you can just take a walk, mm -hmm. get away from your writing mm -hmm. for a little while, do something else and come back. Gives you a new perspective. It absolutely <laughs> does. Roland, do you have another question? What do you think the hardest part about writing a book is? The hardest part of writing a book for me has always been getting started. Because I write historical fiction and biography, I have to do a lot of research, sometimes a couple of years or more. And most mm -hmm. writers that I know are procrastinators. Yes, and so we like to take our time getting started. The good news is, once you have the discipline to actually sit down and get underway, for me, the writing comes very, very fast. In fact, the first four chapters of A Strong Right Arm were written in one week's time. So it's kind of like storing up mm -hmm. all the facts and then just getting underway. That's the thing good. is to do it. Just do it. Did you bring a manuscript along with you? It looks like you've got something there with a lot of markups on it. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Now, I've been writing for, oh, 15 or y years or more, so you'd think I would know my way around a book. And yet, here is a copy of the manuscript of A Strong Right Arm. Now, a manuscript is what we call a mm -hmm. book when we first send it off to the publishers, and this is how it came back. Now, talk about needing moxie. It takes a lot of courage and determination to keep going when the editor marks up your manuscript like this. I went through this six times before they thought it was ready to be published. The next step was that they set it into what are called page proofs. And you can see now it's starting to look mm -hmm. like a book. But you'll also notice more markings. So we still had work to do. Finally, in the very last stage before it went to press, they put out a proof like this. And even though it looks like a book that's almost ready to be printed, mm -hmm. you're going to see all of these sticky chat tags of all the last minute changes. Some of the changes are small. Some of them were big, like having to write a whole new chapter. But whether you are a young writer or in ever, whatever it is that you want to do in life, stick with it. Stick with it. Keep working. Don't give up and don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you'll, you'll succeed. It's very exciting. Raina, do you have a question? Mrs. Green, is your Willie Pearl series based on your own life? It's not based upon my own life, but it is based upon a very special person, and that person is my mother. And yes, her name really is Willie Pearl. This was the very first children's book that I wrote, 
and it was about my mother's life growing up in a Kentucky coal mining town back in the Depression. It's a warm, wonderful family story full of lots of family activities and, and fun things. Yeah, I, I read that story and it, it really touched me. I think it's a story that everybody of all ages should read. Thank you. You're welcome. Timothy, what is your question? Have you written any other books? I know you've written the Willie Pearl series, and can you tell us about the books that you haven't talked about and have talked about? Sure. One of the books that I'm working on now is called Oscar Invincible, The Life of Oscar Micheaux. And I'm sure you've probably never heard of this person. No. Oscar Micheaux <laughs> is a filmmaker, an African-American filmmaker who made over 40 movies. He wrote more than seven books. And most importantly of all, he was actually homesteading on the prairies of South Dakota at the same time that Laura Ingalls Wilder was out there, and yet no one has heard of him before. So the book Oscar Invincible traces the remarkable life of this man, and everyone from Spike Lee to other movie, uh, movie makers today credit with the one that really inspired them to make their movies. So that's, that's what's coming up now. Afria, what is your question for Michelle? What made you decide to write books for children? I think I probably started writing children's books because the books that I heard most growing up were children's books, the Little House on the Prairie series. And so it was only natural that when I got underway with my writing that I would kind of pattern myself after the writers that I love the most, which is another tip for you young writers. Whoever it is that you love reading the most, chances are you'll find something in there to encourage you and inspire you in your writing as well. That's great advice. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have another question for Michelle? I do. Oh, go ahead, Raina. Mrs. Green, what types of books do you like to read on your own free time? Well, I have a <laughs> confession to make. My favorite yeah. books are children's books. I love historical fiction. Mm -hmm. I love biography. But I also like fantasy books. I love the series The Lord of the Rings, for example, and the Narnia Tales. If you haven't read those books, check them out. I think you'd really be surprised. Talk about stretching your imagination. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> We're almost out of time, so I'm going to have Amber ask the last question. What advice do you have for students who are interested in becoming a writer? You know, one of the best things you need as a writer is not a keyboard, it's not a library, it's none of the things you might expect. The best thing you need as a writer is a listening pair of ears because stories are everywhere around you. All you have to do is put your writing ears on and be aware. Every conversation, we writers are great eavesdroppers as you can imagine. Everything you experience on your own can be the subject of your writing, and that's what I and uh, that's what I would suggest yeah. that you do. Keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, and listen for the stories that are out there. So pay attention and have something to write it down. And have <laughs> something to write it down. That's right, absolutely. I want to thank all of you for joining us today. It's been so much fun having you with us. It really yeah, has. It's been Good. Fun. And Michelle, we are out of time. Thank you so much for joining right. us. It's been so interesting listening to all you've written, and we're looking, we're looking forward to what you have in the future. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Our guest today has been author Michelle Green. If you would like to learn more about Michelle, visit her website at www.michellewygreen.com. If you would like to learn more about the Fairfax Network and other guests this year, log on to www.fcps.edu slash Fairfax Network. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Della Kidd. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep dreaming. <laughs>